In this video, we're going to discuss how to create a purchase order for inventory, receive inventory without a bill or with a bill, and then if it's without a bill, enter the bill against inventory. Okay? So first things first, if you don't see this purchase order field up here, receive inventory, all this up here, you want to make sure that you're in admin mode, go up to edit and preferences, go down to items and inventory, up to company preferences and check this inventory and purchase orders are active box. That's how you turn on inventory in QuickBooks. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go into the purchase order field. I'm going to hide this little history box for now because I want to see my full screen. So I type in which vendor I'm going to be putting this purchase order to or who I'm going to give, be giving it to. So let's go ahead and say custom, or we'll say Daigle Lighting. That's good enough. What is the class for this purchase order? It's going to be for remodel work. All right. What template am I going to use? So you can have multiple purchase order templates if you want. What's the date on the purchase order? It's today's date. And it will cal calculate automatically for you your purchase order number. Who's the vendor? And I want to make sure that this is filled in correctly. And where do I want it shipped to? You can also have a drop ship to address to ship it to one of your customers if you want to. But for now, we're just going to have it shipped to us. All right. Then you come down here and you choose the different items that you want. So if I want to have, I'm going to buy some brass hinges. I'm going to buy 500. All right. You can see here when I click on this button, it can tell me how many I have on hand, how many are reserved for assemblies. And then I can also show details to see if any of them are out on purchase order or if any are out on sales order for now. Okay. So for now, I'm actually going to order 50. And notice also when I click on this, it says I can have different, I can have 50 in a case, um, which is 1,200 of each and 100 dozens. So you have the different multiple units of measure there. So right now I'm saying 50 cases. If I say convert 50 cases to 100 e or 1,200 each, it's going to go ahead and do that for me and do the calculation. Notice the amount doesn't change, the rate changes, and the quantity changes. Okay. If you're buying this for a particular customer, you can add that in here. But if you're not, then you can just leave that blank if it's just for stock. So we're going to go ahead and do hardware and doorknobs. All right. And say a thousand or a hundred. And we're going to also do some cabinet poles. And we're going to do 50 each. Okay, and we'll do one more purchase order. We'll do some door frames. All right, so now we have our total purchase order. We can go ahead and print it and send it, you know, over or fax it over to our vendor. Uh, or we can email it to our vendor through QuickBooks here. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and say save and close. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and receive the inventory. So you have someone back in shipping area who has access to QuickBooks, and they're going to say, I'm going to go ahead and receive the inventory without the bill because they just get the boxes. They don't get the bills. The bills get sent to the front office. All right, so receive inventory without bill. Who are you receiving it from? They go lighting says you have purchase orders open. Do you want to receive against a purchase order? So yes, I do. You see all the different purchase orders for that company, but I'm going to choose this one because that's what it tells me on the, the packing slip, which purchase order they're shipping us to. Okay. Notice that it pulls over all of the items here. All the information comes over, the class comes over, the quantities, prices. All right. So let's say that they only shipped us a thousand of these and that we got only 50 of these and we received all of those. 
Okay. So we're going to keep track of that. The total bills for four, for $4,020. All right. The other thing that we need to do is maybe they sent us this and they had a $5 handling fee for each item or a $100 handling fee for each item. So you might want to spread that cost across the individual items. So if you wanted to add $100 as an overhead cost to this, you could put in here $3,100. Note, right now it says cost $3. As soon as I tab off of this, it's going to change the cost to $3.10. That's the true cost of this item because it includes the handling fee on this item, so $3.10. So if you can spread the cost across, you should. If you can't spread the cost across, and they just give you, you know, $45 for shipping, then you can have a shipping item down here, or you can go into the expenses and put it in the proper freight and delivery expense, $45, okay? You wanna make sure and put the right class over there too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, save and close here. Now what this is going to save is it's saving an item receipt right now. This is going to hit accounts payable because we received these items. So it's going to hit accounts payable, but it's not going to be in there as a bill yet. You have to receive the bill. So I'm going to say save and close in the back office here. All right. Then once we were the, the accounts payable person is in the front office and they receive the bill. So they're going to say, I'm going to enter bills against inventory. All right, which vendor? Here, it pulls up, oh, you have this item received from this vendor, okay. And it pulls all the information forward from for me. And it marks it as bill received. So that item receipt actually goes away right now and is just turned into a bill. The reason that that is a big deal is that if you change this date, that means that the items won't be received. If I change this date until the 22nd, these items will not go into inventory until the 22nd. So you want to be really careful with that, changing that bill. If you want to pay it at a certain date, so you want to pay it from 30 days from the 22nd instead of the 15th when you actually receive them, then, then what you should do is just come down here and change this bill due date to a week later, however much later. And the reason for that, again, is because this was received in inventory. You don't want your inventory to go negative. So you want to make sure to receive the inventory and that the bill's dated on the date that the items actually came into stock. Okay, so I'm going to say save and close here. Now if I go look at my purchase order list, if I look at my purchase orders and I say open purchase orders, that purchase order is still sitting in here as open. If I double click it and you can see why, you see how many were received and how many are on back order. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead in and uh, say that I received some more inventory without a bill in the back. Received it from Daigle. Yes, click on this item here, this purchase order here, okay. Notice it only brings across the things that are still open. I'm going to go ahead and do the freight and delivery cost here, $100. These they shipped overnight. Make sure and choose remodel under the items. Just verify everything looks okay. And I'm gonna say save and close, okay? Again, I enter the bills against inventory. Dig a lightning, lighting, okay, pulls the information over for me, and I can go ahead and save and close this as a bill. So when I go in to pay my bills, these will be sitting in my list to be paid. All right. The other thing to note again is if I go into the vendor center and look at my purchase orders, that purchase order comes off of my open purchase order list because we received all the items. So that is how you enter a purchase order for inventory, turn it into a bill.